picture, if you will, it's the early to mid 90s, the height of the 16-bit era of video games. The home computer, once the dominant platform, has been eclipsed by big name consoles from Nintendo, Sega, Atari, and NEC. Only a true blockbuster PC game could rescue the platform from certain doom. Are you ready for a marvel of virtual reality? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Did you think we were going to talk about Doom? <laughs> no, let's talk about Mega Race. Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Veronica Explains. I'm Veronica, and today we're going to talk about a classic, um, really? We're, we're gonna go with classic? Today we're going to talk about a classic PC game, 1994's Mega Race. Mega Race was released by Cryo Interactive Entertainment, the same company which brought us the Dune game in 1992. This game is, well, not Dune, or Doom, or anything of the sort. Even so, I spent hours of my life plugging away at this game as an eight or nine year old, and I think it has its moments of fun and excitement. But I'll get into the specific quirks of gameplay in a little bit. First, I wanna show you how you can get it running on Linux with just a few steps. First off, you'll have to buy the game. Now, I don't have my physical copy of the game anymore. I'm pretty sure I got it from a Packard Bell 486 my dad bought back in the early 90s. Luckily for you, you can easily get it from good old games, and it's a pretty good price to nostalgia ratio, if you ask me. From here, it installs in Lutris like a dream. If you don't have Lutris, get it from your package manager, and then connect your GOG account to your Lutris install. Then, just follow the prompts, and voila! You're ready to dive into the exciting world of Mega Race. The concept behind the game is you're some kind of contestant, called an enforcer, on a television show where you have to destroy some baddies with cars for some reason. However, and this is hard to understand if you haven't played the game, you and the baddies are battling in some kind of virtual reality world, which the television network has created in supposedly real places. It's weird. You're basically playing a video game in which you're playing a video game. The gameplay is pretty simplistic. You're racing, but the point isn't to win the race. It's to defeat these... <sighs> speed gangs... that the television network has placed into this virtual reality. Or as they call it... <sighs> virtuality. The narration for the game is provided by the not-at-all-pestiferous host of this game show, Lance Boyle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The game is way too full of cutscenes from this character, and they are annoyingly repetitive. If you play the game for longer than three rounds, you're bound to hear repeats of the same sleazy TV show host monologue. We call them the sharks, and I think you'll find them pretty snappy if you'll pardon a quite amusing joke. <laughs> As the Enforcer hunts down the deadly shark gang and cleans up the aqua tube for decent law-abiding tube users everywhere. Hey, uh, I really hate to interrupt a tough guy, but there's only about a zillion viewers out there waiting to see you in action. So get in gear, baby. Choose a car. Luckily, you can totally skip through it to get to the fun part, the racing. Why the air quotes? Well, I'm not totally sure how this game can even really be called a race, since there's no real race element to the game in any capacity. I mean, sure, it's on a track, and if you get far enough ahead of the baddie, they explode for some reason, but the real goal is to shoot the baddie or side rail them into destruction, so... In my opinion, it's not really a race. It's also very much on rails, as you move forward even if you don't press any buttons, which is weird. 
Again, I don't know if I'd really call it a race in the same sense as a game like Mario Kart, and if you're wanting a pure racer, there are much, much, much better options for you to choose. Even so, if you grew up in the early 90s, you might have fond memories of hearing Lance Boyle granting you fabulous prizes like a book. Don't worry, it's a fake. Ah, you were scared for a moment there, right? <laughs> what a gag. A second pair of arms. Now you can eat two hamburgers at the same time. Or, and I'm not making this up, a Scottish accent, complete with a disturbing tongue animation, which definitely didn't give young me any nightmares at all. <laughs> Nostalgia aside, the gameplay does suffer from a few flaws, which I should address in the name of transparency. First of all, it's way too easy to run out of bullets, and bullets are the only way to consistently destroy the baddies. Sure, you can ram them into the sidewall of the track, but that only works if you can catch up with them, and catch up with them in exactly the right spot. If you go too far ahead of them, it's virtually impossible to slow down to let them pass. You know, since you're on rails, and it's not really a racing game. So, you have to hope you can hit the little speed boost things, which feel hard to hit directly and consistently every time. And there's no apparent way to speed boost without hitting those things, which means you often spend most of the game annoyingly just out of reach of the enemy you're trying to destroy. Again, Mario Kart, this is not. There's also the dialogue. Now, I've already picked on the narrator for his own annoying annoyitude, but some of this dialogue is absolutely cringe. Our chosen candidate and everybody with a death wish is free to apply, including men and women of either sex. But seriously though, folks, it's thanks to robots that people like you can spend all day watching VWBT. Just don't give them the right to form labor unions. That's all I'm saying. Hi there, tiger. All psyched up? Yeah, I keep that adrenaline pumping. Ooh, you're really scaring me. Yikes. All that aside, if you grew up in the 90s, you probably remember tons of terrible, horrible, no good, very bad games that you had to play because it's what we had. We didn't have an app store. We had to go to Best Buy or Circuit City, uphill, both ways, in order to spend our allowance on big box games. And speaking of the big box, I don't think I've ever seen one for Mega Race. Everyone I knew who owned this game got it when they purchased a computer. If you bought this game in the big box, please let me know in the comments because I'm starting to wonder if it ever really existed in the stores. It certainly was commercially sold for the 3DO, however, as well as the Sega CD. I haven't played those versions, and frankly, I'm probably never going to. The PC version is good enough for me, and I'd venture a guess it's good enough for any of you. Aw, oh, sorry, Enforcer. You didn't get the job done. It's return to reality time, old buddy. So, why did I take the time to highlight this mediocre example of early to mid-90s gaming? Well, it's simple. It's nostalgic for me, since I grew up with it. My friends and I used to take turns sitting in front of that beige Packard bell, mocking the horrible dialogue, and getting Mountain Dew all over my parents' keyboard. These old games like Mega Race, they don't have to be good anymore. It's just nice to know they're still there for me to play. If you're at least 25 years old, there's a good chance you have some games from your youth that don't really work out of the box anymore on a modern computer. For me, Mega Race is a good example, but maybe for you, you have fond memories of hanging out with your friends playing some edutainment title, or some Commodore 64 game, or maybe something from the Windows XP era, Whatever game comes to mind, it's worth a shot to see if you can find a copy and actually play it again using tools like Lutris. I've said before that one of my favorite things about Linux is that it's often simple to get older hardware and software running. Obviously, I can't vouch for every piece of software out there, but I do know that there's an entire Linux community ready and willing to help you get started so you can feel the nostalgia at your fingertips. A week ago, I didn't really know what Lutris was, but with a little bit of help from my friends who've used it, 
and the installation scripts provided by the Linux community, I was able to get this game and several other retro games working. Go ahead, help yourself. The Linux community is full of positive human beings, building cool tools like Lutris, and they are eager to help you dive in. Of course they are, because Linux is awesome, and so are you.